there are various organs which help the body in the process of respiration they are known as respiratory organs so let's see them one by one here we breathe in air through the nose that air passes through the nasal cavity this here is the nasal cavity from nasal cavity air goes further down and it enters pharynx from pharynx air goes into larynx also known as voice box from larynx it goes into windpipe known as trachea this trachea divides into bronchi which enter both the lungs so these in red are shown the lungs bronchi further divide into smaller branches and are called bronchioles these bronchioles keep dividing and branching and form certain balloon like structures which are called alveoli singular is alveolus the lungs rest on to a muscular membrane which is known as diaphragm these are some of the important respiratory organs now let's see them one by one in greater detail so in the beginning of the air passage we have nose nose has two nostrils from which air can enter into the air passage in the inner lining of the nasal chamber there are hair which trap large particles from entering into the body it helps to trap large particles it also adds some moisture to the air the inner lining of the nasal cavity has mucus secretion so it helps to add moisture to the inhaled air and this mucus secretion also helps in trapping harmful germs so it helps in trapping harmful germs or dust particles another important function of nose is the sensation of smell to some extent nose also aids in speaking once the air has entered the nose it goes into the next part of the passage which is known as pharynx the inhaled air now passes into the next chamber which is called pharynx this pharynx is located at the back of the mouth so this pharynx it opens into two passages one is the passage for food which is known as esophagus or food pipe another one is the passage for air which is called trachea or the windpipe so you can see here that pharynx it's dividing into two tubes this one here at the back is the esophagus or the food pipe and here in the front we have trachea or the windpipe the passage for air the third part of the respiratory system is larynx so larynx is present over here below pharynx now suppose we eat something that food should not enter the windpipe right so at that time windpipe has to be closed and normally when we are not eating anything the food pipe or the esophagus it is collapsed because it has soft walls when we are not eating anything we are just breathing that time this flap on the larynx is open while when we are eating something this flap on the larynx is closed and food goes into the food pipe so we can see this over here when we are breathing and not eating anything that time food pipe is collapsed and air goes into the wind pipe this flap is known as epiglottis so when it's just for breathing epiglottis is open while when we eat something this green thing here is the food particle so when we eat something then epiglottis closes the wind pipe so that food goes directly into the food pipe so that is known as epiglottis what is it the flap like structure which prevents food particles from entering into the wind pipe larynx is also known as 
voice box. It contains vocal cords which vibrate to produce sound. That is why larynx is also known as voice box. These vibrate to produce different sounds. Next part of the air passage is trachea or the windpipe. So here is larynx. From larynx air now goes into the windpipe known as trachea. So this windpipe it has rings of cartilage. Breathing is a continuous process. So it is very important that the trachea remains distended all through the day. So it has rings of cartilage around it. These rings of cartilage provide flexibility to the windpipe and also keep it distended permanently. So what is the function of these rings of cartilage? First is it provides flexibility to the windpipe. Second point is that it keeps the windpipe or trachea distended permanently because it should not collapse since breathing has to be done all the time. Now air passes into the bronchi. So this was the windpipe here. This windpipe divides into two which are known as bronchi. So these bronchi further keep dividing into narrower passages. So bronchi then it divides into finer secondary bronchi. Secondary bronchi divide further, become finer and they are known as tertiary bronchi. These tertiary bronchi on dividing are known as bronchioles. And bronchioles keep dividing and the terminal bronchiole or the last bronchiole known as the terminal bronchiole it has tiny balloon like structures on it which are known as alveoli. These alveoli are the functional unit of the respiratory system. The next important organ of the respiratory system are the lungs. They are two. They are protected by the rib cage. So lungs are protected inside the rib cage. As you can see in the diagram here, these are the ribs. Here only a part of the ribs has been shown. So they completely protect the lungs inside them. And see the position of heart. Heart is present exactly in the middle of the right lung and the left lung. There are various lobes present in the lung. So this here is the left lung and this is the right lung. Let me just write. This is the left lung and this is the right lung. The right lung has three lobes. It has three lobes while the left lung only has two lobes. In the place of the third lobe, it accommodates the heart in between the two lungs. That is why left lung has only two lobes to accommodate or to adjust the position of the heart. Now we come to the next part of the respiratory system which is diaphragm. This diaphragm is over here as shown by the arrow. This diaphragm is a muscle. It's a thin muscle on which the lungs rest or support themselves. This thin muscle or the diaphragm, it separates the chest cavity from the abdomen. It separates the chest cavity from abdomen. Movement of diaphragm helps in inhalation and exhalation of air. So these are some of the important parts of the respiratory system in humans.